our first border call. We are in Skagway, Alaska. This is the gateway to the Yukon. This is their uh, big graffiti wall. People have been painting stuff on here for 20, 30 years. It's against the law to do it now, but it's uh, covered all up across this mountain. So, like I was saying earlier, here's a sign, Skagway, gateway to the Klondike. So people would come into this little town and this was the staging point to head off into the mountains to the Klondike during the big gold rush. The funny part is it's still 2,000 miles from here to get to where the gold was to the actual Klondike up in Canada and they had a law that you could not leave here unless you had at least a month's worth of supplies to leave out of here. So these buildings right here. <laughs> These are actually a uh, cat house or prostitutes or however you want to call it. And they give it a colorful name there, negotiable affection. <laughs> so that was the big businesses in this town, booze, girls, and gambling. This place is just like a boom town from like Back in the cowboy days when people rushed to California or Arizona for the silver mines. So this little village here, it's not very long, all the way down this block here. But at, at its height, there was actually 70 different bars, dance halls, uh, which are all now illegal. They do have a mock-up of one of them back down the street here and they give a story ab about uh, a guy named Soapy Smith who came here, he got that nickname because when he lived in Colorado, he used to make soap and he'd go to these like little traveling shows where he would sell his soap to these people in the audience and he sold it real high. And if you had a chance there, if you bought a bar of soap, it might have a $5 bill in it. Well, he had people in the audience staged in there that, uh, that were worked for him and they would be the ones that would pull the $5 out. So everybody run over to buy this soap. Well, after the guy ran out of Colorado, he came up here and he became a big celebrity here. Everybody in this town loved him because he looked like a humanitarian. People would get robbed of all their stuff and he would just show up and, you know, give them $100 or however much it was for they could get back home. Well, come to find that he was the one that was robbing them. So he'd rob them, steal a couple thousand dollars worth of stuff, give them, you know, 50, 100 bucks to get home. So they thought, you know, here's this big humanitarian. Well, this one guy, actually found out, figured it out after he got robbed, came back, they had a gunfight, he killed Soapy Smith. Just a couple weeks before that, they'd had a big celebration in town and they had a parade and Soapy Smith was the Grand Marshal. He was the one that everybody just loved. He was cheered and revered. After this gun battle and it came out what he had been doing, he became the most hated man almost overnight. In fact, up here, we'll go up to the cemetery and you'll see where they wouldn't even let him be buried in the cemetery. He's right outside the fence line. <laughs> Back here behind me is the Gold Rush Cemetery. These were all the, the people died in 1800s during the rush. And we were talking about Soapy Smith. Well, here he is. And the actual official cemetery line is right here. So from these stones, all the way down to here is the official cemetery. Because he became so vilified, he is outside the cemetery. They didn't want him even buried with their regular uh, citizens. So because it's kind of dark in here, I'm not sure how well you can see it. I'm just gonna take a few pictures of the cemetery and these are them. So this right here is actually the, the tombstone. See how big it is? This is the guy, Frank Reed, who killed Soapy Smith. 
And see, they revered him after the fact that they made this big old uh, area for him while Soapy is way over there in the trees outside the cemetery. So we found the falls. See up here over my shoulder. This is called Reed Falls or Little Falls. It's named after the guy that shot Soapy Smith. Glad to tell you how much they love that guy. I don't know how well you can hear me with the rush of the river, but right there, that's a bear cave. So you just come right on out here and catch the fish coming down the river. I hope he's not in there now. So from where we got off the boat to get out here to the falls and the cemetery, it was about a 45 minute walk. You know, uh, I don't know, four or five miles. Pretty easy, all this flat ground until you get to the cemetery, then you gotta hike up the hill to get here. But it's well worth it. We were here a couple years ago and we didn't come all the way up to the falls. We didn't even know it was here then. Behind me there is the semi-famous House of Sticks. The whole front of the building was put together just by sticks they found along the way. The back of the building has been rebuilt into a real building, but the front part is still the original. And it, the address is actually uh, when it was built, 1899. So that ends our day in Skagway. Uh, uh, tomorrow we'll be heading to Juneau. So I'll see you then.